and welcome back to another edition of Indy Lax TV. Ryan Camden here with the man who leads the program, head coach Kevin Corrigan. Coach, thanks for joining us. The Fighting Irish, 9-2 and two overall, 3-1 and one in conference play. Recapping these last five games, starting out with uh, really two big wins out there on the East Coast against Rutgers 7-6, Providence 13-8. How important is it really, Coach, to go out there and really these lacrosse heavy areas and pick up two key conference road victories? Well, I mean, at this point in the year, you're just trying to, to get your team playing the way that you need to play. You know, I mean, I think early in the year, your, your focus is on, you know, identifying your team a little bit, uh, you know, banking some wins when you can. Uh, and we did a great job in that, in that first part of the year doing that. Now it's about preparing for the, for the last part of the year. And I think finding an identity for ourselves that, that really fits and that our guys identify with and, and helps us uh, really have some clarity in what we're doing is really important. So those wins back east, uh, those are important wins for us. Our conference wins, obviously, we need those. And, and, uh, and but, but, but more importantly, those steps in the right direction for us uh, getting to the end of the year here. And then in between those two games was a, a very tough loss against St. John's. It always seems that you and St. John's, you guys play each other very close. What did the team take away from that game, that loss? Well, I, I, I took away a lot in that. I, I, think, uh, I think I had failed to help our guys uh, really over the course of so many back-to-back -back hard games. I mean, we, we played six straight top ten teams to open the year, and you get so immersed in, in um, I, you know, in, in that, that opponent and so immersed in, in the preparation for that opponent every week that I did a bad job of continuing to develop our self-identity during that time, and I think that came to bite us a little bit in the St. John's game. So, so uh, you know, I, I think we need to, you know, there's some things we found out about ourselves that are going to help us, you know, going through the end of the year, um, and, and some things that just to be reminded of that, you know, that we have to continue doing as we go through the year. After that, it was Marquette, and that's a really unique game. Marquette really in the first year of their program. Marquette, a small Catholic school. You guys had to hold a special event there in Chicago at a, a smaller uh, Catholic academy. How, how, how neat of an event and a game was that for you guys and, and really the sport? Yeah, that was great. Uh, it's the second time, uh, well, the third time that we've played in Chicago in, in, in the 25 years that I've been here. Um, and each game has been really well received. Uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's a community with a ton of youth and high school lacrosse, but no uh, college lacrosse to speak of. It's certainly not at the Division One level. So uh, it, was, it was a great opportunity for us, great opportunity for Marquette to get up into that market. Um, and, and just a neat day at, at Loyola, you know, a former player of ours, Robbie Snyder, is the coach there, and, and uh, he was happy to be hosting us, and so it was, a, it was a great event for us, and I think a good event for, for Chicago Land Lacrosse. This past weekend, you were back home at Arlotta against Georgetown. You find yourself down early in that one, 4-0, but you come back to win. How does, you know, you preach on identity. How does a win like that help that? Well, you know, second year in a row, we found ourselves down by four to those guys uh, early in the game. And last year, it was at halftime. This year, it was in the, in the first seven minutes of the game. Um, I, I think more than anything else, one thing we know about our team is we have great resiliency. Uh, they, our, our guys are tough-minded. They don't, they don't lose their poise. Uh, you know, you can tell that by all the close wins and overtime wins that we had early in the year. Um, and, and I think, you know, this time they just, they, you know, I'm not sure what our issue is there to get off to that slow of a start. Uh, some credit certainly goes to Georgetown on that. They played very well early in the game. And, uh, but, but, but our guys, you know, they didn't lose it. They, they, they held it together and we came back. I thought we really competed well for the last three quarters of that game. And that may be as much as anything when you talk about our identity is, is knowing, knowing the level that we have to compete for every ground ball, for every possession. Um, you know, and, and you know, we, we, we had great success riding them, and, and that's just a matter of hustling and competing, and, and uh, so I, I thought those things, and uh, along with faceoffs, uh, where, where they had a guy coming in who was uh, one of the top two guys in the country, and uh, our t top two faceoff guys were out. And yet we had a freshman come in and Trevor Brosco and just did a terrific job for us. So a lot of positives come out of that game uh, and, and some things we got to continue to work on, clearly. Of course, Saturday is another nationally televised home game against Villanova. How do you avoid another really slow start against the Wildcats? That's a good question because they're a very quick starting team. They come right after you. And I think maybe that might be the answer for us is we know these guys uh, come to play and they, and they, they, they play really fast. Uh, you know, in, in all areas, they press out on the defensive end. Uh, they'll ride you aggressively when they have the opportunity, and they and they uh, offensively uh, they play a kind of a constant 
Bucks uh, motion offense with a, a, a lot of picks and slips and, and, and off ball movement to go with guys just really attacking very aggressively. Uh, and, and so, you know, I, I hope that just the threat of that and, and, and our realization of, of that's the strength, of one of the strengths that they bring to the game will help us respond in time. You brought it up earlier, and I just want to, as we wrap things up, maybe touch on the strength of schedule, you guys sitting there with an RPI of, of number one, and it seems as you look at the lacrosse, the national scene of, on lacrosse as a whole, there's a lot of close games going around across the country. How is that tough schedule uh, going to help you guys as you prepare to make a postseason run? Yeah, I mean, right now, you know, we're, we're uh, <laughs> of the other top five teams in the, in the, in the country, we've played four of them. Uh, and, and we're the fifth, so uh, you know we, we've got a great strength of schedule this year. We've got a, a, a terrific, uh, um, uh, you know, blend in, in our season. I, I think it's going to put us in great shape when it comes time to choosing the NCAA tournament and hopefully seeding teams. But that's down the road for us right now. We, we've got going over Saturday and, and, and a lot of. Uh, uh, season left to play, even though there are only a couple regular season games left, they're both big ones for us, and so we're, we're not going to worry about all that. That works itself out uh, and, and, and figures itself out at the end. Our job is to, is to concentrate on Saturday, and I think that's where our guys' minds will be this week. Two games left before the Big East Tournament, but up next, assistant coach Jerry Byrne takes us through one of his favorite drills. Hey, one, one really important drill that we do within our defensive system here at, at Notre Dame is called the crease shedding drill. And what we're trying to focus on is a real pivotal part of how we play team defense at Notre Dame, which is the kind of the confrontation and the pressure points within the interior of our defense. So in basketball, this would be the equivalent of the key. And so as you can see from the, from the name of the drill, it's called crease shedding drill. And you can see from the key, we have a, a defensive player on our team playing the role of the ball carrier. Uh, we have a defensive player being on ball. We have a crease defender who's playing the role of, of the guy who's making slide decisions, and then we have a crease attackman. All, all these roles are being played by our defender. So what it does, it gives our, our defensemen a sense of what it's like to be an offensive player, and because they have to play that role of an offensive player, being a defenseman it gives them a unique perspective to the pressure point within our, our defense. From a teaching points standpoint, what we're working on is our defender who's on ball, obviously he's moving, he's shuttling, he's sideways running, he's stopping and going and changing direction. For our man who's playing the slide role, the crease defender, he is inside pivoting, maintaining a sideways uh, relationship to the ball. And, and while that's going on, he is, through this dummy drill, is making the determination of when he's going to have to slide. And then I think probably the most important part of this drill is while you're being interfered with, while someone's setting a pick on you, do you have the poise to not get aggravated? Do you, can you shed a man while he's trying to grab your stick, grab your jersey, and interfere with your ability to make that slide decision and that slide technique? And so we, we do this drill about once a week so that we can develop the, the tendencies and the technique and the characteristics and character traits to allow us to fight through these pressure points within a possession. Let's go to the video. You can see it live in action. You can see at the start of the drill, number 10, in a great athletic stance, He's putting himself in a position, we call it the ball you man triangle. He can see the dodger, and he can see the crease attackman that he's responsible for. Go ahead, you can run it. He's sneaking a peek, he's looking, he's looking, he's opening up in relation to the dodge. Now the ball's changing the side of the field, and he works, and look at his footwork as the ball shifted across that white line, call that the middle of the field, and he's opening up, constantly putting himself in that ball you man triangle and you can see his head pivoting. We call that sneaking a peek. And this is great as slow-mo because you can really see the technique. Now you're seeing the offensive player trying to interfere with him, trying to set a pick. And then the, and the dodger is changing. He's going from one side of the field to another. And he needs to continue to shed so he can have a good slide angle if this man gets beat. Again, it's shifting again. Another interference, another pick. He's opening up as our on-ball defender is is moving with him and changing direction, getting his stick uh, upfield so the offensive player has to run through him and his stick. Now he rolls back again. Our guy is shuffling. He's pivoting. He's sneaking a peek at the slide man. Now this time he sheds him underneath as that guy sets the pick. And now he's opening up again. He's watching another change of direction. And here comes the ball back again. He's sneaking a peek at his man. He's seeing where the pick is going to be. 
and now he's opening up again. And this can happen legitimately in a game. We're kind of over-dramatizing how many times this will happen in a game, but we're trying to develop the poise in our guys and the technique and the endurance that when at the end of this dodge, they have an awareness. And here comes this slide. We have one guy staying left and another guy staying right, and we finish that slide off. Am I looking at him right there? You'll be looking, you, you're kind of here, you can look here, but it's more of a conversation. Oh, okay. Let me think for a second. Yeah. I thought you would have note cards, John. Yeah, I should have. I, did, I didn't know I was doing this. You want me to ask the questions that I would think John would want to ask me if he was asking me questions? <laughs> Hi, how's it going? It's John Kemp from uh, ND Lax TV. I'm here with Coach Byrne. Coach Byrne, how's it going? I'm great, John. How are you? I'm all right. Um, we're here uh, uh, coming towards the end of the season. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, the past couple games, uh, especially uh, Georgetown? Well, you know, the Georgetown game wasn't a great um, start. You know, they were very dis disciplined and deliberate on on offense, but I think once uh, we all settled down that they, they struggled toward the end of the game to get the kind of shots that they were hoping to get, hoping to get against the best goalie in the country. Uh, as you said, they, uh, they actually started off with uh, five, I think five goals in the first quarter. Uh, what do you think uh, really put the defense towards uh, moving, uh, giving up three goals in the last three quarters? Uh, was it senior leadership, maybe offensive? Uh, offensive selectivity. Uh, what do you think w w was what uh, kind of pushed us forward to the to the end of the game? You know, I think that they became a little more selective. I think we got more comfortable playing their their pick and roll and Canadian offensive style a little bit better. They're obviously very respectful of you and what you can do in the cage. So I think it was a combination of of getting kicked in the stomach at the start, and then you know having to kind of look back coming out of the timeout. Coach was was not pleased in the after our first timeout. And um, I think ESPN was very happy about him being, them being kicked out of our huddle, but it allowed us to say things in the huddle that, uh, that I think we all rebooted coming out of that. And I think from that time out, I think they had a really hard and long oh. day. So I think combination of us refocusing, our uh, defensemen become more comfortable with the offense, and obviously the respect that they have for you. I guess moving forward uh, to the rest of the year, we have uh, Villanova and Syracuse and then the Big East uh, tournament. It's, it's pretty much been wide open, Villanova's uh, in first place, I think they're undefeated in the conference. Uh, what do you think the keys are to, to our success, especially against Villanova and then also going towards the Big East tournament? You know, I think each team comes in with a sense of how we play defense and how well you play in goal is that they're very selective and they're trying to find these pressure points, these cracking points within our defense. And so we have to be prepared for the, the deliberate nature with which our opponents will play offense and their work to try to get a great shot and Villanova obviously brings that you know similar kind of offense to Georgetown a lot of pick and roll a lot of open sets a lot of trying to spread us out over the field and and screw with our slide decisions so uh, I think Villanova Syracuse and Big East tournament we're going to see a lot of the obviously we're going to see the teams that we've already played mm -hmm. this year in the Big East tournament and we got to take the lessons from those earlier games and uh, not only apply it to Villanova and Syracuse in the regular season but taking it to the Big East tournament and into the NCAA tournament. Actually, moving off of that, what uh, what in practice do you think uh, the team should be focusing on at this point of the year? Obviously, going towards the end of the year, uh, there might be some new things that you're working on, but there's also some things you're patching up from the rest of the, from the beginning of the year. Uh, is there anything in particular that you think that the defense defense, obviously, uh, you being the defensive coach, that the defense needs to work on to, to push us towards that national championship? Right. That we're I mean, going I for? think we're always working on our agility, our approaches, our slide and recovery. But I think probably the focus going forward is on ourselves in the big picture. Mm -hmm. And I think within that is um, our ability to kind of, we know we're going to get stops with your saves and we know we're going to get stops through the ball pressure that we put on our defensemen, but our ability to kind of collect ground balls and clear, you know, that's been uh, a little bit of a kind of a thorn in our side over the last couple of years. We don't struggle to get saves. We don't struggle to get stops. But now taking that stop and being able to transition through the substitution period into the offensive end, make sure we get the right personnel on the field. I think if we tighten that up a little bit more, then yeah. we're, you know, we're going to be a really tough team to handle at the end of the year. Uh, we got a new coach on the staff this year, uh, Coach Carwick. Can you talk about his role on the team? and how he's progressed throughout the year. Obviously, adding Coach Carwick, you know, brings the average age of our staff down yes. significantly. He's a 2006 grad from, from Notre Dame. Great hair, great energy. <laughs> you know, definitely making us a better looking staff uh, by the moment. But, you know, Matt brings, you know, a great, you know, having been a player here, he's got a perspective of the challenges from a student athlete. So that helps Coach Carwick and myself to understand the, 
the challenges that you guys are facing each mm -hmm. day on the other side of campus. Uh, he also brings kind of the young players having played in the MLL and the professional league, you know, being from an upstate uh, power in, in New York. He's got a great energy and, a, and an IQ for the game. And, and having a coach who's 26, you know, in the upper 20s is that helps in, in kind of his dialogue with the, with the younger guys on our team. So Matt brings great energy, great IQ, and, and, and just, you know, great personality to our locker room and our huddle. Going off of what you said, I think uh, everything that you've talked about, uh, we need to improve, uh, everything that we need to patch up going towards the end of the season, and uh, the thoughts that we have going through our mind that uh, the rest of the season is pretty much about ourselves, but also preparing for the opponent. But uh, I guess that's it from NDLAX TV. I'm John Kemp. Jerry Byrne. Thank you.